All right. So this is just the way I do it, but I always take a, I got this little piece of half inch plywood. I set it in there and I I stack my medium and coarse stone up just so it's up higher, right? And with Japanese stones, even right now, it's only been a couple of minutes since I cut from the last segment here, but uh, you know the water is soaked through these stones. If you put a couple of drops of water on there and just sit around and wait for a minute, it'll it'll kind of disappear. It like drains through it. They're they're incredibly porous. That's part of what helps these things work. You know, it's very open stuff, right? So, and of course, as you're cutting or sharpening, I should say, uh, you know, you're going to be scraping the water off. So you, you'll need to constantly refresh water onto it. Anyway, so here's the general technique. Set your stone at about a 45, and you want to sharpen around 22 and a half degrees. The angle isn't super important. The you know the more acute the angle, the finer, the more keen the cutting edge is going to be. So it kind of depends what you're doing. Like these are these are butchering knives, so really you want them very very keen. Um, we've got a cleaver I'm going to do later. That one you know. Doesn't need to be as clean, more kind of an axe. So, like, you could go up to about 30 degrees, um, and uh, you know that that will be on the uh, the secondary bevel. So, this, you know, aim for half of 45, right? So anyway, I kind of set it on the stone, tip it up a little bit, and then just pull it across. I mean, it's uh, don't put a lot of pressure on there. That's how you do it. And, you know, this is something you kind of, like, I, I also put my finger up against here when I first set it down. I just have developed over years, you know, like, I can kind of tell I'm at the same angle, you know. You don't want to be at this angle, then that angle, then that angle, then you're kind of making a curve. Not, you know, it takes a lot longer to, to get a good edge that way, and you may never get a good edge that way. Okay, so let's kind of feel it. I don't feel any burr there, so and I shouldn't. On this side, oh yeah, I've got a burr here. I'm not on the tip. Okay, so we need to work the tip a little bit more. You could even, yeah, you could swell it around a little bit or whatever. Tip, but there's a little spot of it that's not quite good. Yet. This is kind of the thing that, uh, you know, days past, you know, our forefathers, they did this sort of stuff. It was just a matter of daily living, you know. Um, most people don't sharpen their knives nowadays. People that do hunting and fishing, or uh, people that are culinary night, before I get away from it here, you can see that this part of the stone is dry now. I just felt it when I put the stone back on there, or the knife back on there, so I have to put a little bit more on there. Anyway, people have gotten sort of out of the habit of, of doing hand work of any sort to the point where some people don't even cook, cook their own meals anymore. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Pet peeve of mine, I suppose. I enjoy continuing skills, you know. I didn't do as good a job on the grinder as I thought I had. I can pay the price for it now. 
<laughs> like I said the most important thing to getting a good sharpening job is having the same angle, whatever angle it ends up being, as long as it's the same, it's it's gonna matter. And all these same like uh, you know hand-eye coordination things they apply on the grinder too. I mean I'm just when I'm grinding I'm just holding the blade up to it, and working it. But I uh, I'm comfortable with the fact that I have the angle that I'm trying to do. All amounts to practice. I think I got my first pocket knife when I was about eight. <laughs> so ever since then, I've been sharpening knives. And you can see all the water is gone again. I've either scraped it off the end or it's sort of absorbed in. But no problem. So. I think pretty much got a burr. It's not as strong as I would like to see it. You can feel this burr really good. You know, I mean it's noticeable on the coarse stone. When it gets to the fine stone, it gets you know smaller and smaller. You're essentially from the time we start grinding, we're creating burrs every time we cut. You know, once you get one side sharpened, it raises a burr. You flip it over and you grind that burr away. When the two angles meet again, it raises a burr on the other side. And then and that away, and each time we're doing it on finer and finer uh, stones or media of whatever sort we're using, and you never really do get it all gone. I mean, microscopically, there's going to be a raggedy edge. So now, I'm work this side, and it's catching really good because we've got that bird on. Don't be tempted to push hard because then you'll just fold the burr this way. We still got the burr still here on most of this. There's a burr on that side, so. kinds of fancy jigs and stuff you can buy for holding the stone at the right angle or the, holding the knife at the right angle but you know if you just practice it's like uh, one of my favorite things is uh, sawing by hand sawing wood by hand and you know I've got a power miter box and I could set it up to cut whatever angle I wanted really, you know, uh, pretty accurately, you know. It's really good if you need to make a whole bunch of 45s or something like that and they'll be pretty consistent. But if you have, uh, I don't know, if you're working on moldings or something like that, uh, you would think in a corner you should be a 45, but a lot of times it's off just a little bit. 
Maybe it's 43 degrees or something, you know? It's not quite right. Well, you can you can use tools to lay out that, figure out what that error is and lay it out on there, but you know, try to set your power miter saw at 43 degrees, or half of 43. And, you know, there's not a detent for that. <laughs> so, and if you try to work off of your, you know, your little hash marks on there, yeah, I don't know, it's all pretty spotty if it's going to work right. And it's really fussy getting it set up that way. You could do it, I suppose. Plenty of professional guys out there do it just like that all the time. But if you just get good with the handsaw, well, when you got a line on there, you know, you've been practicing all these years, right? You know, you've been using handsaws. And practicing to cut to that line. So if the line's at 45 or 43 or 12, 15, whatever, no matter what angle it's at, you can just see that line. You've marked it out. Cut right to it. Feel the burr. It's quite gone on this side. Okay, that probably was this this side. I probably should have looked before I started, but I think I ground this side last probably, and I had a big, great big burr on here because of the grinder. That's why it's taking so much more effort on this side. You can see we're grinding it off. We're not, you know, breaking it off of there or forcing it over. Just kind of polish it away. It's the best way to think about it. All right. That's pretty much got it on, on the coarse stone. this up here. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll try to roll it. You can see the primary angle there and it's probably oh, maybe an eighth of an inch. Pretty good and wide. That means I've got it nice and a nice low, low angle, right? Yeah. I can feel this is, this is getting pretty keen here. But this is uh, by far not sharp yet. So I'm gonna okay, we'll just do it here. I'm just gonna set these aside for right now. I'm gonna grab my polishing stone here. And remember it it doesn't need you know to be submerged all the time, it just needs moisture on the surface. And it, it won't really soak in too much. I mean eventually it will, but you'll be scraping it off there faster than, than that. Okay, so I've got a burn on this. So now the angle I was holding it at before, that's the primary angle. So now we're going to tip it up just a little bit so we don't have to grind away as much metal. You don't need to grind it on a polishing stone at that really low angle because it's going to take forever. So we're just going to hold it up a little bit higher. that we've got on there right now off. approaching the sharp edge here. Nice thing on this stone because it's a light color you can see the you can see the swarf. I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, but but the water will start to get dirty or if you rub on the 
you rub on the stone in one spot, like you can see it turns kind of a little gray. Well, that's, that's steel. <laughs> that's the steel that you just cut off right there. A good way to test for sharpness is using your thumbnail. So you can see it skates away, skates away. Right there, it's starting to it's starting to catch. Well, that's not much of an angle. So I mean, if you're like this, you can see it's definitely it's catching. It's not sliding. Anymore. See the swarf starting to build up in here. Another thing you can do, oh, I've got terrible lighting in here. If you can look down on the edge, if you see light reflecting back at you, that's dull. <laughs> it should just be a black line. Alright, that feels pretty good and sharp. So, let me go, uh, go get my strop and we're going to. We're going to really polish this one. All right, well, normally I do this. This is my straw hop. I use it to keep my razor. You, know, you can see how sharp my razor is right now. <laughs> but uh, it's just a piece of leather. And uh, this is a really, really super fine compound. And it's made by Flex Cut. I haven't even worn all the way through the leg of the F yet. And I've had this thing for <laughs> like 10 years. Anytime I sharpen something, I always uh, do the last little step and I strop it. Yeah, this stuff is, it's like uh, some kind of a, I don't know, hard clay type paste with, with a diamond or something impregnated into it. But, uh, let's see, normally I do this hanging vertically, but we'll uh, see if I can't do it. But anyway, when you're stropping, you want to kind of hold more or less it's not super, super critical. You want to make sure the edge is touching and pull backwards across the, the leather. If you go the other way, it's going to cut into the leather, right? Especially you know, if it's really, really keen. This should be a pretty keen knife. Microscopic ragged edge.
probably got to use a little bit more pressure on this than you do on the stones because you're trying to hold it into a piece of leather. And the can is still not, not that good. Razor, razor sharp right there. So, to prove that, let's see what happens here. Does that prove it? That's razor sharp. So, I'm going to say that one's done. I suppose I can only sharpen so many knives here before my arms bare. But uh, anyway, so that's how I sharpen a knife. Um, there's a million ways to do it. As long as it comes out like that, it's right.